Hey everyone, Aaron here with a different kind of cut. I'm gonna show you guys how to cut up a chuck roll. This is one of the most famous and most commonly known roast out there uh, for slow cooking. And if you were to buy it from a meat shop, this is what it's gonna look like before they cut it up. So when they buy the cases and they come in, it's a cryovac, whole cryovac, it's called a chuck roll. And we're gonna cut this thing down into chuck roast. We're gonna cut it into chuck steaks. We're gonna make some Western ribs out of it. We're gonna make some stew meat. And most importantly, the chuck eye steaks. And it's good steaks, basically the same thing as a ribeye, only it's the, you know, the very first cut off of the chuck here, and it's the last cut off of the, the ribeye. So we're gonna get this thing opened up and show you how to cut it up. First of all, first of all, I got uh, I've got a couple different knives to choose from. Which ones I'm going to use? I'm probably going to end up using uh, my big guy here, um, but I just kind of want to show you over the years I've had these knives for a very long time. This one here I've had for 20 years. This is the very first knife I ever ever bought. Victor and Ox Fiber Ox. Um, I've owned it for 20 years now, and I just keep on sharpening it, keep on using it. Works pretty good. Um, so I'll probably end up using this guy here for trimming it up and then I'll use this big guy here for actually cutting the roast and making some nice roast. So I'll get started here. Cut it open. And if you're probably, you're probably wondering why I got a uh, towel here. It's because I don't want the blood to leak down onto my floor and stuff. I'd rather just wash the towel. Um, cause you're gonna have some blood when, when you go to open this thing up. Let me show you here. This guy here is a 33 pound chuck roll, which is pretty big. They normally come in about 25, 25 pounds or so. And this is what it looks like. Um, right here is where like the ribs and stuff lie on the cow. This end here is the bottom portion. This, this side here is where the neck runs. Um, we are gonna cut all this off and basically turn all of this into some really good, um, really good ground beef. You know, it'd be 80% ground beef. I can take this whole chunk off here and make perfect burger meat with it. Um, we're gonna take all these little chunks off here. And also, the one thing you wanna look at is I don't know if you can see this or not, but right about here, it's a little bit darker. It's a little bit brown. And what that's from is when they cryovac these chucks, they run it through a very hot bath, a water bath. And what happens is it kind of burns it a little bit. So you're going to want to take all that off. Up here, you can kind of see it's a little bit too. We're going to take that off, clean it up, so that way you don't end up having that on your roast. Also, with all this stuff here, we'll get all this stuff cleaned up. I'll show you. So you're just gonna stick your knife in here and basically just trim off the, this stuff, you're not gonna keep. You do not wanna throw that in your grind. It'll get stuck in your grinder. You'll have a mess, be yelling and screaming. All right, take all this off here. We'll just toss that away. That's going right in the garbage. Okay, so you can feel this is where that neck meat runs. You can, you can see that there's a bunch of fat and stuff here. Let me show you what we do with that. Okay, we're gonna take that right off. We're gonna take it right down, right down here like that. And we're actually going to set this aside because not only can I use that for burger, but I can also make some really nice Western ribs with that. So, you got this brown stuff that I was telling you about that you do not want on your roast because it's not it's just not very good to eat. You're gonna take that off, but you can use it for burger. The only thing you can't use for burger would be like this here. This is an actual bone. It's from the rib. When they go to cut it up, sometimes they leave that in there. You're gonna toss that. Any of this cartilage stuff here, you're gonna take that off. Okay. Toss that. This is where the ribs lie on the meat, and they actually create kind of like a callus. You take it all off, because it's really tough. It's not gonna cook up for you very well. Okay, let's flip this guy around. 
see there's still that brown stuff there that I was talking about that's all coming off but it's good to grind we can throw that in the grind it's considered trim we can make a burger out of that there's nothing wrong with that for burger okay now we got uh, some tendons and stuff here we're also gonna remove but the tendons are going in the trash we're not gonna keep that okay there's a little bit of fat here you can see I usually take that out give it a nice little trim just like that stick your blade in okay. Good. so she's cleaned up on that side we're gonna flip it over and take a look at this side see this here this little guy you can hear it it's like a chunk of chunk of bone you get that off throw that away okay kind of want to just feel it make sure that there's nothing hard in there we got another tendon in here right here we're gonna take that guy out and cut that off and throw that away okay now she looks pretty good we can go ahead and start cutting her up into our sections if you take a look at this end here you can kind of see it kind of looks like a like a ribeye right here you know that's where your chuck eye is gonna sit so we are gonna take a good size facing off of that roughly three inches so we can break it down and get it into our our chuck eye steaks so what we're doing is we're taking off a straight cut off of the end here so we can get our chuck eye I'll slide this guy aside and show you now from the inside you can see that looks more like a ribeye here so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your knife and you stand this guy up on end on the flat side and stand it up up on end and you're just gonna slowly peel it apart right down the seam here okay okay you just set this guy get aside because this is also going to be western ribs and i'll show you how to do that a little bit later here so now we're going to trim up the fat get the fat off of here we're going to save the fat because we want to make sure we can use that for burger down the road now you've got technically two steaks here three steaks four steaks however many you want but we're going to go like this cut those guys up Okay, so now if you take a look at it, that's like the the ribeye right there that I showed in my last video. Pretty much almost identical to the ribeye, except for it's located on the chuck. So they call these the poor man's ribeye, but I'm going to tell you right now, they're awesome. They're really good to eat. So what we're going to do actually today is we're going to cut these guys into smaller steaks because we're gonna pan fry them tonight on an iron skillet. Cook these guys up for dinner tonight. We got one there, two, and we'll have four steaks total when we're all done. Just kinda wanna support the meat when you're cutting it because it's, it's generally a little loose and soft. You got four nice chuck steaks. I mean, that pretty much looks like a ribeye. Except for it's a chuck. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our chuck steaks off of the next cut. Because that's going to be the most tender out of this whole entire primal. When you, once you start getting down towards the leaner side, towards the neck side of the primal, it's going to be pretty tough. Um, you're not going to want to eat these as steaks on this side. So you're going to want to take them off of the side that you took, took the, chuck, the chuck eye steaks off of. And what you're going to do is you're just going to basically cut them at roughly, roughly about a half of an inch or a little bit less. Okay, <clears throat> usually we run these things on the saw, the boneless blade, so we get nice even cuts. 
but I do not have a saw today. I'm going to eventually get one of those. And then we can show you all the bone-in stuff as well. So, there you go. You got a nice chuck steak. There's one. I'm not going to cut these all into chuck steaks because I actually don't care for chuck steaks. Um, they're good. Good steaks to have, but I'm going to cut these into roasts because that's what we eat most here. And then I'm also going to turn this into stew meat. Since I've already cut it into a chuck steak, I'm going to turn it into stew meat. And I'll show you how to do that in a second here. So now I'm cutting the, the roast. So we're going to cut this thing roughly two and a half inches for every roast. And that's uh, roughly a four to five pound roast you're going to get when you cut it that way. And this thing is ready to go, ready to put in the oven. I'm going to set this guy in here. I'll show you the next cut. And if you, if you notice, what I did was I ran all my cuts off of the edge of the off of the edge of the chuck eye end because that's the that's the angle you want to be for when you go to cut this. If you cut it off of this end, there's a good chance you might end up cutting it at the wrong angle. Okay. There's another big one. This one here, that one's more like a, well, about a five pounder, I'd say. Throw that guy in there. And just keep on going down, down the line here. So now we got three nice five pounders, at least. Remember, this was a 33 pound roast to start. So and then it's, this is the side that I was telling you, you do not want to cut into chuck steaks because it'll be tough and you're going to have a bunch of angry friends and be like, man, I can't even chew through this stuff. Unless you like, like chewy steak, you can go ahead and cut them. But. Okay, so now this here, this piece, this is all getting cut into stew meat. This end piece, you're going to take, you know, the, the gristle and all the tendons and stuff, you're going to take all that out and just get rid of it. But you're gonna keep all the meat. Just like that. Okay. That's garbage. So this take that out. I mean, for the most part, um, you're gonna learn how to cut meat by doing stew meat. Because when it comes down to it, it's all about taking out taking out all of the the stuff you don't want, you know like the gristle and the fat and all that stuff okay so that's all gonna get cut into stew meat just like this right here so you see this it'll be a nice stew meat you know slow cooking meat throw it in the slow cooker okay now comes the western ribs this is that that second chunk i took off of the chuck eye what you're gonna do you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna cut off this back side here, just like that. That's going into stew. This side here is your western ribs. Bam, just like that. Those things are gonna cook up. They're gonna be amazing. Smoke them. I'm gonna throw those in the smoker along with those other ribs. I'll probably take a little bit more of this fat off. That we'll keep for later. Just like that. So now you got some nice western ribs there that came off of the chuck eye end. So now that, that big neck piece that I told you we were going to save for later, that's this guy right here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this neck piece and you can see where the fat runs here and here and here and here. See that? Okay, so this fat that runs here, here and here, we're going to cut it right about here because anything past that is going to be tough. So you're going to cut that right there, just like that. You're going to set that aside. Then here, you're gonna cut this, this chunk off here, you see this? Cut that off, okay? Now, you have your western ribs, okay? So you cut them in half, cut them down the long way, just like that. Take off the fat, the unwanted fat that you don't want, just like that. Now you got another set of western ribs, okay? So without, with this chuck on top of on top of 
you know, the roast and everything, I mean, you're going to get quite a bit of other stuff going on with it. So you're going to get Western ribs. You can get Chuck, Chuck eye steak. See, so this here, this is on the Western rib. See how I didn't cut through it? That's pretty tough stuff. You're going to just take it off. Just get rid of it because it's not going to make a good Western rib. That's going in the garbage. Okay. So we'll clean her up a little bit. There, there. Okay. There and there. Now, you got, this is the Western ribs that we got. That, that. We got this guy here. And we got all of these. Okay. Those are all good Western style ribs. You can slow cook them. You can braise them. You can, you know, put them in the smoker. Whatever you want to do. It's going to turn out good. So, um, let's see here. Is there anything else? I don't think so, actually. So, the rest of this stuff here gets cut into stew or gets thrown into trim. So, if I can't make it into stew meat, right, which a lot of it you can, because you're basically just going to take off all the stuff you don't want. You can either save it or throw it away, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to save it for grind. And we're going to cut this all into stew meat. like that okay this stuff here is good stew meat it's not best I wouldn't recommend only using this for stew meat this stuff here is gonna kind of fall apart and shred so if you like shredded stew meat it's really good for shredded stew meat um, if you like your stew meat to be like solid and square then you're gonna want to go with like a an eye round and then saute it and then throw it into the slow cooker. Um, but that pretty much wraps up the video for today on a chuck roast. I'm gonna spend the rest of my time cutting this stuff up, getting it into stew meat. And that's about it. So hopefully this helped you out. Like, share, and uh, subscribe. Thanks, thanks for watching.